Gig Gab, episode 389 for Monday, July 10th, 2023. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Sponsors for this episode include capoapp.com, which will give you song learning superpowers, and factormeals.com slash giggab50, where you use that same thing, code giggab50, for 50% off America's number one ready to eat meal kit. We'll talk more in depth about both of those in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. How are we today, Mr. Kent? I just finished uh, five gigs in six Ooh. days. Ooh. Yeah, very, very tired. <clears throat> and everything, all of a sudden, my knees hurt after several. They hurt after one gig, but they hurt really bad after several gigs. And so it was kind of like an oncoming thing. I was gratified that my voice held out. I'm a little, I'm a little hoarse today. I think it's more tired horse than overuse horse. You're a big horse, Paul. Don't don't sell yourself <laughs> short. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. But uh, yeah, it was a great run. I have a lot to share about it, but I I want to start if it's okay, just talking about the one we did yesterday. So the last of uh, sure. So we did we did Fourth of July, then a day off on the fifth, right? Then a a, sh- a ninety minute concert series on the sixth. I did an acoustic gig for two hours on the seventh, Whew. and we did our big ticketed gig, which was a huge success, four hundred tickets on the eighth. And that was a, a three hour total playtime, about two hour and 20 minutes. And then we did a two hour straight through yesterday. So wow. the thing I want to share that was, uh, and it was all great. I mean, the band played terrifically all week long. The, the acoustic gig with that band, the coffee house band was absolutely wonderful. Awesome. Yeah. So it was a great week of good music, right? But yesterday we had a situation where we had a sub drummer. So we, we have a, a whole summer of sub drummer, because our drummer is ill and luckily our old drummer has been available and has been with us most of the gigs, but couldn't do yesterday. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So our bass player, Chris suggested we call this guy, Mike Vanderhuel, who oh, yeah. if you are a drummer, you might know that name because Mike Vanderhuel is the drummer for what I thought was mostly a, a Bay area phenomenon, but they've been around for, for 30 years. That's from y t right? That's right. He's yeah. from y t And he was available and he was happy to do it. So, you know, I was like, all right, you know, and I asked Chris, you know, will will he prepare or will he just think he can just walk in and play? Because that our show isn't really that way. That's that's a good question. Right. Yeah. 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 So Chris says he goes, Paul, this guy is a pros pro. You are going to be blown away. So. We connected over over text and, you know, I shared with him a little chat and then I and I started sending him the songs. Sure. A week later. I touched base with him and said, Hey, you want to start, you know, talking through this stuff? He goes, All right, I've already charted it all out. I've gone to your YouTube side. I've seen how you do the things. I've charted out your weird ending. And I was like, What? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like that's like, the right way to prep. I mean, I mean, you know, that's the way a pro should would that's the way I would expect a pro to prep. Yeah. Get yep. absorb everything that's out there and then ask questions uh, you know, when when necessary. Yeah. And then and then uh, the beginning of this week, we touched base by phone and kind of went down with it. And he didn't really have too many questions. And he was really prepared. And he was kind of like humming me through. He goes, you need to go four bars here. And, and I mean, he he knew our stuff as well as if he'd been playing with us forever. That's awesome. And then the night before, I guess he had three last minute questions. I wasn't available, but, but Chris, you know, walked sure. through it. Yeah, yeah. The dude walked in and freaking crushed it. There was there was his grooves were amazing. Um. His showmanship was great. He was really fun to have on stage. I mean, this is a drummer for Y&T. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, no, this is not a surprise. What a wonderful experience. This is great. Yeah. So if you're a drummer out there, or if you're just a musician out there, go check out Y&T. And I think it's Mike Vander Huel, V-A-N-D-E-R-H-U-L-E.com. Yep. I've got it linked in the show notes at Gig Gab Podcast. So you, oh, you, I appreciate you, it. And again, yeah. so, so A, I've had many people sub for us in different ways over the years. Many who represented themselves as pros, I have never seen this type of preparation. Yeah. Right. I, and it's so interesting. People who have said they're pros and good enough 
to get you through the gig is in general the philosophy of that stuff, right? It's like it's like you know we'll start together, we'll end together, but you know this guy caught the nuances. This guy caught great. so much stuff. And again, this is like the drummer for Y and T. Did he have time to actually sweat our nuances? Well, whether Eviden- he did or not, evidently yes. Well, whether he did or not, he he made the time, right? And, and again, yeah. so yeah. you know we talk about what's a pro, what's not, what's not a pro. And even after the gig, a few very minor weirdnesses. He goes, he goes, he goes. Next time we'll have all that. Stuff. <laughs> like he yeah, was yeah. like, they That's annoyed great. him as well. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't take the approach that well, you know, not bad. Three annoyances out of a, out of a two hour show. He was like, no, no, we'll we'll get those next time. Please call me. And I was like, that's great. Th- this is a whole different level. Well, that's a guy. That's a guy who wants the gig. Like, it, it, like. Who treats every gig as the most important gig he's playing at that point in time, because it yep. is. Yep. Uh, yeah. And, and again, he comes in, you know, there are a lot of people who knew him, who came to see him play. Sure. There are a lot of people who knew us, who knew him, who wanted to see what it would be like. I called enter Sandman just cause I wanted to see him <laughs> play it. Uh, and I called, um, Oh, stay with me by the face. Oh, what right? a great fun tune. Oh yeah. And I, ju- I just wanted to hear like this. Yeah, He's a big rock, rock drummer just crushed the stuff, yeah. and he did. And uh, again, that's he was great. cracking jokes on stage. He was totally relaxed. Yeah. It, well, that's what preparation will do for you, right? I mean, we talk about this, and it's I, I think it's probably relevant to any uh, any instrument, but us, I, I think especially important that the the drummer is confident. And we've talked about this on the show. When as a drummer, when you're subbing for someone you have to somehow get yourself confident when you take that stage because a, a, a drummer who's lacking confidence is going to, especially with a band like yours, it, it's going to fall apart. Like it, you're, yeah. everybody's going to feel it and nobody's going to be comfortable. Right. And so, it, you know, he clearly understands that and he knows that it, for him, the way to get confident, and this is a good way for all of us, but certainly for him to get confident is to prepare the crap out of these things so that there are no surprises or you're limiting the surprises. I'm sure there's going to be some little surprises. And, you know, there were three of them that, that actually made a difference. And so he, he'll, they didn't, he'll get well, they those didn't make a difference. Time. Sure. They, they made a difference to him. To right? him. But that's no what one, I meant. Yeah, yeah. 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 I would also say the other thing is this is where crews who actually read because he had charts. Yeah. And you can't memorize our stops and starts. No, no. Our, no, when I, no when, I, when I subbed for you, I had charts. I mean, I, there, there was yeah. that's the only way to, yep. to do that kind of material. Unless you play it 15 times and then it starts to get into your head. But the first time, I, I need charts, man. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. And I, I would just say that the, I mean, he's a pro and I don't think, I, I mean, he knows he can drum. I mean, his chops sure. are excellent. And so, you know, but that's and only knows- that's only step one. Like knowing you can play is 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 it like that's great. I mean, don't get me wrong; it's super important. But that's not the end of it. That's the beginning of it, right? Yeah. yeah. And then preparation was the next step, and yep. then out getting all those questions answered. Yeah. And asking really good specific questions, like like if you didn't get an answer that was clear, you wouldn't let me off the phone, right? And that's you know, great. Yeah. So again, I think the point of this is. There are many people in in music who consider themselves pro, and I have more often than not found good enough to get you through the gig is the definition that that many people who call themselves sure. pro are willing to live with, right? Sure. But this guy, and he, you know, he took the same scale that the rest of us took for that gig. Yep. And and it wasn't about money, you know. He, he takes pride in in his profession. Well, yeah. Once you say yes, I, you know, and and we've had this conversation before too. For me, and I, I think a lot of us listening, you know, a lot of you listening are, are, feel the same way. Once you say yes to a gig, the money, you've already solved that. You've already addressed that part of it. Whether it's good money, bad money, whatever, you've said yes to the gig. Now you're playing the gig. The the money, I mean, the money matters, especially if it's your living. Totally respect that. However, you don't prepare less. You don't bring less to the table for the gig that pays a hundred bucks versus the gig that pays 300 bucks or the gig that pays 500 bucks. Like when you're on stage playing the gig and even when you're prepping the gig that the you've said, yes, it's a binary thing. Are you doing the yeah. gig or are you not doing the gig? And once you're doing it, all gigs are treated equal. Uh, That's right. I, 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 to me, you know, th- where the money matters is 
where, where, that, where I'm thinking about the money is when it's like, do I want to say yes to this gig? You know, and, and yeah. that's where you say, you know, you kind of look at all the factors and it's like, yeah, of course, yeah, I'll do it. Or no, it's not worth it to me. Okay, great. Yeah. Because you know what you're going to put into it. And so is it worth it to you? Yeah. Good to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, great experience. Fun guy to play with. You know, that's awesome, man. Super chops that brought different, different things. So I, this one thing I find with drummers is, they have slightly different styles, slightly different feels, and different songs are just flavors of good in different good drummers' hands. Right? Totally, totally. Yeah, so it was yep. fun. It was really fun. So yeah, a drummer, great, a drummer can change the sound of a band. Uh, yeah, big time. Yeah, yep. And, and you know, create pockets that a band can be comfortable laying yeah. down in. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it was just a great, great experience. Awesome. So much fun. Um, our guy's getting ready to come back, so we got a couple more weeks of gigs before Don. I'm glad to hear back. that he's doing okay. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, okay. he's doing okay. well. Great. I check in with him, and um, he's itching to get back at it, of course. I bet. And so he's gonna come. And the funny thing is, um, about two weeks after he's cleared to play, we booked our first double in many years, and I was like, <laughs> dude, are you? You know, I you do you want to pick which one you want to do? I can't imagine. He goes, Nope, I'm in double. Let's go. So oh, man. I think, yeah. So he's <laughs> he's ready to come back strong and uh yeah, good things. And actually, and then one thing about this week that was great, I don't know what it was. I mean, we played really well all week. Sure. It was just one of those weeks. I must have given out 50 cards that people are like, We need you for this, we need you for that. So yeah. you never know how you know when that stuff is gonna convert or if it's gonna convert, but some of it will. And yes. um it was just one of those weeks where we were so having how fun. Do you, how do you do that? Like, like I think this is a, you know, sort of nuts and bolts question. You say you're giving out cards at gigs. I assume, it, but I'd like to sort of hear you talk through your process. I, I know you've got the contacts that you have and all that stuff, but, but this is biz dev, right? You're, you're, you're creating opportunities where you might have new contacts and, and, and new stuff, new opportunities. How do you how do you approach that at gigs? So you have cards that that are ready to go that for like house rockers or whatever, right? Well, yes, of course we have cards, but so you're asking about a process, and the the naked truth is there's no process, right? And yeah, but, I'm really but there's bad more, at it. but that's not true because you've already you said you gave out fifty cards. There's a process to that, right? Like well, if you don't have the cards, you don't have them to give out. So <laughs> well, well, again, I'm going to take myself down a couple of pegs. I successfully ordered cards and had them printed. Okay. I always I always forget to restock my guitar cases with cards. Luckily, I have got a bill and bill things to everything. And he took a big stack of cards and he always has. And actually, people will often come up to the sound guy and ask for a yeah, card that's during a, a gig. So, so maybe point, that's yeah. part of the process is keep the sound guy stocked. But um, it's so I think that's a really good part of the process. Yeah, yeah, fair yeah. enough, fair and, enough. And and keep but, the sound guy stocked with cards, but also his favorite beverage because you want to make sure you take care of Bill. So take care of Bill. Coffee would be that for Bill. So that's anyway, perfect. Um, so the the process is quite imperfect, and usually people come up after a gig, along with many friends who are coming to say hi or something like that. And and it's just a, you know what it's like after a gig. It's just it's yeah. just bedlam. Yeah. So. But this time there were two in particular things. One was a guy who came up and said uh, after yesterday's gig and said, do you do corporate events? I said, oh, 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 do we do corporate events? Sure. And so he had heard about us and and he came to see us and he gave me a card and I gave him a card and I did follow up with him, thanking him for coming up and saying hi. So that's part of the response, uh, thanking him for being interested in the band, sure. making sure he had my phone number, making sure he had my website. And then he got right back to me and said, oh, great. I, this is great information. Let's let's so I know what do you charge and what, you know, all that type of stuff. So and that I do have kind of like a a, a, a pitch. A template. Yeah, yeah, a template. And um, so that went well. And the other one was a very, very good uh, for. Well, it's a, it's a charity gig ostensibly, but they bring in a headliner. OK. And then they have local bands who don't. But it's a big, big deal event. Yeah. yeah. And I've been trying to get us on that event for a while. And that guy from that event happened to be at the gig on Saturday night. <sighs> That's so Love the band. Again, we had a we had a great week. We played really well. We entertained really well. And um, I went back to my notes of who I have been talking there. And I sent a note saying, hey, I met someone from your organization. I am I am crap at names, Dave. I mean, someone will tell me a name. And it's gotten to the point where I go through all the things, like look at them, repeat their name, try to associate their name. All the somebody. tricks. <laughs> and you know what? Nothing works. None, none of them. Like, none of them. 
<laughs> but I, you know, luckily, if you keep enough emails, you you might be able to go back. So I, I sent a note to them and said, "Hey, someone from your organization came. Would love to pick up the conversations." And so that's it. I, I guess the best thing. And again, who has a paper and pencil? Maybe you have your phone. In I was going to say to use like the things. notes app on your phone or something to just you know capture that stuff. You could something, use the notes app on your phone. You, yes. You, you, yeah. Do, do I have my phone in my hand as when I get off stage and Fair. say hi to friends? So, you know, process now it's bedlam. If I had my act together, which I should knowing what I knowing, know, what knowing you do. what's right and wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you should. But, um, uh, you know, like I, I don't, I don't usually follow up on wedding things. Um, I encourage someone to, you know, get a hold of me when I'm in front of my calendar to check availability. Yep. And that puts a little bit back on them if they're really serious about it. Right. But corporate things, and, you know, big things that take relationship nurturing, I try to make a mental note or figure out some way, at least a note about what organization they're with. Sure. And then go back to their website and try and try and do some research there. But that, no, that makes sense. Um, my, my friend, Scott Jordan, uh, who, if, if you don't know his name, you might have heard of the clothing brand Scotty Vest. He is the Ooh. Scott behind Scott Jordan. He's he's crazy guy. Great guy. But, you know, he's he's crazy, like kind of like the rest of us. But uh he has this uh, this phrase that he says all the time, which is always following up, like always be following up. We talk about always be performing. And he says, always be following up. And that's his litmus test for vendors like who are pitching him is he will put something back on them and see, do they simply follow up? It's very simple to follow up with somebody, but it communicates that a you're interested B, you have your act together. C, you're not a flake, right? Like all of the things. And so that that's his whole MO is if you want to work with me, show me that and be attentive. And 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 we, you know, in, in our jobs, you know, going out there and pitching people for gigs, that's like, I mean, that's sales 101, right? Is always be following up. Like, yep. Yep. That's, that's how it works. All right, look, we're in the thick of summer here. That means we've got rehearsals and gigs and all of those things and not a whole lot of time, right? Too busy to cook with our sponsor, Factor, which is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. You can skip the extra trip to the grocery store and also the chopping, the prepping, and the cleaning up too while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality that you need to be fueled up for those gigs, right? Factor's Fresh Never Frozen Meals are ready in just two minutes. I've done this. Lisa and I have done this, in fact. These Factor meals are awesome. They are delicious, and they truly are ready in just two minutes. All you have to do is heat and enjoy, and then boom, you're off to the gig, or maybe you're home from the gig, and you can finally, like, chill. You know, it's great. Factor offers these delicious flavor-packed options on the menu each week to fit a variety of lifestyles from keto to calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and protein plus. They're all prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians, and each meal has all the ingredients that you need to feel satisfied all day long. This July, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. Again, ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash giggab50 and use code giggab50 to get 50% off. That's code G-I-G-G-A-B-5-0 at factormeals.com slash giggab50 to get 50% off. And our thanks to Factor for sponsoring this episode. Next up is Super Mega Ultra Groovy. Those are the folks behind Capo, our go-to app for learning music by ear. Without Capo, it's super frustrating, right? Music and video players make it hard to move around in a song or find exactly the right spot that you want to hear. And if you can change the playback speed, which not all of them let you do, it sounds terrible in all of those. Well, this is where Capo comes in, right? It gives you song learning superpowers. For precise learning, you can use Capo's transcription playhead to tackle like solos or little bits in bite-sized chunks. And when you slow down your song, even at a quarter speed, they still sound great because Capo was built using high-end studio quality audio stretching technology. But that's barely scratching the surface. Capo also lifts chords, detects beats, and so much more. And here's the best part. Capo gives you all these tools completely free. There's no account to create, no ads, and no sneaky trial subscriptions. You've got nothing to lose. Head to capoapp.com or search for Capo in the App Store to download it for your Mac, your iPad, your iPhone. Again, that's Capo by Super Mega Ultra Groovy. C-A-P-O-A-P-P.com. And our thanks 
to Capo for sponsoring this episode. All right. So, Paul, we got an email from Mark who sent it into feedback at giggabpodcast.com. And he said, I believe it was several episodes back where Paul was talking about the topic of if you're going to make a move that will directly impact or affect someone else in your band, be a good guy and give them a heads up or something to that effect. My question is from a band leader's perspective, Mark says, do you demand, expect, appreciate, or don't care one way or the other what moves your band members make in terms of joining other projects or making decisions on their playing status or some decision that will affect the rest of the band? Or even from the bandmate perspective, perhaps. It seems post-COVID especially, where the employee has the control of job hopping or leveraging to get a better situation for themselves, that long gone are the days of keeping your employer, in our case the band leader, involved in the process of a member making a decision to leave or join another band or make some kind of move that affects the band. I know everything is an at-will type of arrangement in the band world, Mark continues, and no one owes the band leader uh, the opportunity to have a heads up or a pre-discussion of a member making anything uh, kind of any moves like this. Maybe I'm pining for the good old days, he says, but it seems like it's harder to run a band now more than ever with the whole I come first attitude that seems prevalent out there as a band leader. He asks, how can you help mitigate this with your members? Thanks, Mark. That's a good one, man. Well, we'll start at the end. How do you mitigate it? have enough gigs and enough work where you're going to be the priority and you have the leverage. Use the word control somewhere in the middle of there. Sure. But who has control, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you as a band leader want to have control and have leverage, have enough work where, you know, you're the most attractive thing that a guy can have and you have the option. So th that's, the, that's where I would start is like, if you have put together a band and you haven't done the work to, find out if everybody has the same values to how much you want to play and what types you want to gigs you want to play and all that type of stuff. If you don't know this information, when you are forming a band, even if it's a democracy to know who, who your yeah. peers are, because if you're in a band where guys are just all of a sudden gone, you know, that creates a very uneasy feeling for the people who remain as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I would, you know, as I was reading his question, I totally get why he's asking this of the, the band leader thing, but I think there's a fallacy to that. Uh, it, regardless of the scenario, if I'm in a band where it's a democracy or if I'm in a band where I, I'm the leader, which is rare because I try to avoid those scenarios, or if I'm in a band that's led by someone else, the decisions that other members make about their that impact their availability to play with the band, they impact me. If regardless yeah. of whether yeah. I'm the one that has to solve the headache or not, like it, it's still like, oh, we don't get to take that gig or we do get to take that gig, but it means we're down a man or we have a sub yeah. or like th those things affect everybody. It, so, yeah, I, I like I, I think everybody's got a stake in this. Absolutely. And again, you know, the currency in general here is work, you know, is, is to have gigs, right? Whether that's, that's a, one of the currencies. Yeah, I well, would say, I mean, I would say an identity, like depending on your band, an identity of being part of that band. You, you know, we talk now, bands have a presence, right? And, and if you're smart, your band has a presence that's larger than the amount of time you spend playing gigs. And so does does your band's presence curry favor or mean something to the members? And if so... Then simply being able to say, I play with Fling, I play with Bitter Pill, I play with the House Rockers, is that important to your bandmates? And if so, well, then maybe that also curries some favor. Yeah, so I'll I'll challenge that one. So because I'm I just what I live right now, right? So yeah. So I have been surprised. A band like ours that has a good reputation and works and gets paid. This is one of the things that we'll talk to my buddy Nick Sharkin about. So we were going to um, talk to Nick tonight. We told you we were going to talk to Nick tonight. Yeah. The technology God said we were not going to talk to Nick tonight. So we'll do that maybe next week. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully next week. Hopefully. Anyway. Yeah. So to encapsulate my situation is, you know, I told the guys I'm going to move. The band's going to go on. Uh, here's what you can expect. Sure. Um, and in that, some guys have gone out to do other things. I have been incredibly surprised. Some of these are really long-term relationships. Yeah. That 
that how what they go on to do hasn't warranted a conversation with me. Sure. Right. Sure. I, you know, Nick, Nick will remind me, Nick has been, Nick has, you know, put together this fabulous other project that is quite involved. He has been incredibly communicative with me about making sure we both understand what's going on. Let's talk about calendars. He's been great. Sure. Right. Other guys have made some decisions that affect me. And again, they're good guys. They've been my friends. Some probably just don't like those kind of conversations and don't want to have it. Some probably, and again, you know, we're talking about maybe two or three guys of these types, but some of them probably don't think it's my business. Right. And yeah. so I would, I would yeah. say, I thought I knew these guys and, and I've been surprised. I brought the currency, you know, I, it, even to the degree that, that um, I've said book, you know, block these weeks. Sure. I filled those damn weeks. I've, I've held up my part. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, like, right. I've been surprised. And again, some of it is what people perceive as ethics. So, some so maybe, is what people maybe I can offer some perspective here because I, I in in a sense, I am that guy, right? Where I play in multiple projects and I make decisions about what gigs I'm gonna take or what vacations I'm gonna take with my family and like all of all of those or what work trips I'm gonna do. All of those things affect my ability to play on any given Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, right? Like, you know, if I'm, doesn't matter if I'm booked with another band locally or if I'm in Chicago, I can't play a gig if somebody else calls me, right? Like, so that, that, Mm -hmm. and I'm aware of that reality. And maybe, maybe as a byproduct of just having lived that way for a while. And again, it's, it's not just other gigs with another band. It's, it's the work stuff or the family stuff or whatever. Maybe because of that, I, I have my priorities. Like I, and, and to be clear, I am very proud to say that I am a member of fling and that I am a member of bitter pill. Like I, you know, those are bands that, that mean something to me. I have them uh, in addition to a musical connection with those people, I have an emotional connection, not just to the people, but to the band too. Right. And, and that's true of both of those. But as I'm planning my work trips and figuring out, you know, okay, well, can I come home? Should I come home early from, you know, I come home on a Friday morning just to make sure I'm available that Friday night, you know, if, in case something comes up or like that trip we did to Montreal recently with our niece, I scheduled it from Sunday to Thursday to leave Friday and Saturday on both sides of it open in case there were gigs that came up and things like that. And so I'm constantly making those decisions for myself, but also trying to be aware of, well, I, I, I care about these other projects that I'm in. And so I want to make sure I'm as available as I can be for those. And, and, I don't have a conversation with every one of my bandmates every time I'm planning a work trip or a family trip, or even when I'm taking a gig, except where it's like, Hey, there's this thing coming up. I know we're working on, you know, getting that gig. What do you think? What are our avails? Or is every, is, is, is this particular Friday night in September already blocked out because three other people can't do it? If so, uh, you know, then I'll say yes and take this other gig. But if not, yep. and it looks like there's something developing, I'll hold it or whatever that is. But that it it's, doesn't happen every time. And and yet in my mind, and I could be misleading myself happily here, mm-hmm. but in my mind, I'm I'm still honoring what I see as my commitment and responsibility to those projects and 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 rep and delivering on what I have represented my availability in general to be. I I think you're doing the best to try and create a good. And remember, there's it's shades of gray. It's oh, it's right? a continuum, right? There's no right. binary. It's not run one way is right, the other way is wrong. Yeah, no. Well, I it's not that. even one way is right. I'll actually take it a different direction. There's one where you assume we're all buds and we all want the same thing and we're all in this together. Yep. And the other end of it, from a leader perspective, is this is business and I got to do what I got to do to run my business. Now, remember that you can be a hard ass on either side of these yep. <laughs> points, but, but actually there is, there is room in the middle, right? Totally. I and that's where come, most bands land is in the middle. Right. Yeah. I I've actually, 
I've actually swung the pendulum though. So mm. I could not understand how my friends would sometimes make some decisions that I was. And, and literally now that it's quite prevalent and something I have to deal with all the time. And again, I know these guys, they're good guys. Sure. They're, they're, they're making their decisions and their actions are speaking as to how they, you know, view this stuff. Yep. I've actually swung way over to the other side. It's like, you know what? We're buddies and everything like that, but this is business. Money's getting transacted. People, you know, I, I'm trying to keep everybody on the same page about this stuff. So I'm going to have to be a little bit more specific about the rules I got to run this band with. Yeah. And I send out a note saying, here's, here's where we are. And if you can't deal with this, it's totally fine. I totally get it. Right. Let's, let's be cool to each other. Right. You know, my whole premise is, is that one guy holding up nine guys from working is not a good premise that oh, the yeah. other nine guys are going to slowly get bitter and it's going to be a problem. So I'm going to be uh, and very, I, very, very, and I, I catch and, myself in that scenario all the time where it's like, Oh, I can't believe I've made myself available on, you know, Friday, the 12th. I can't believe somebody else didn't go through the trouble to make themselves available. And I know darn well that, you know, two months later, it's going to be reversed. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, but, but, you know, well, what you said like, before about, about, you know, is our two, is anybody else not available? And this is where the group calendaring and as yes. a leader insisting that people respect the group calendar because people are trying to make decisions about their lives. So that's, that, that's the business part. Of it. I will like, tell you while, while we're here on this subject, the app, where's the gig we use that in fling and man, that it's a, it's just a web app. You don't even have to install anything on your phone, but it manages all those blackout dates and everything. And you can go in and see who else is, you know, blacked out on that date. It is a game changer for fling. I wish I could get all of my bands on it. It's so yeah. good. Yep. So there is tools to help with that type of stuff, Yeah. but that doesn't change people's hearts. You know, like, Correct. like literally Correct. I have been, yes. so, so to answer the original question, I have been surprised at people who I thought I knew fairly, fairly well. Yeah. Yeah speaking through their actions and kind of like doing things that affect the house rockers that affect me and my business, so to speak. And I have to, you know, make some decisions about this stuff. So it has been easier for me to say, Hey, listen, we are friends, but you know, as you can see, you doing that is causing this problem. And I don't think you want to cause that problem, but it is. And I got to deal with it. So, you know, whether it's, I'm changing my, policy towards subbing on certain things. Yep. Certainly on, on private gigs. Um, uh, you know, I, like one policy that I've seen fairly often is our band has to be first call for you to join it. First call means you can't take another gig until within 30 days yep. until within the 30 day window. That's a very, you know, I've seen that often yeah. and that's one way to r run your band. And, and the thing is, if you, you have to be careful. You know, you bring in people and you say, here's the deal. And a lot of people will shake their head and said, yeah, great. I'm in. That's it. And then they go ahead and do whatever they want. It doesn't anyway. matter. Right? Yep. right. And again, not bad people, but I think, you know, the, the, the shiniest thing, you know, seems to be a thing with people who are trying to cop, especially people. Well, if you're going to run a band where you, where you do that and, and you're right, it's, I've seen it with, you know, I've actually seen a band try to do 15 days, which I think is, I mean, again, it, whatever works, but I've seen it anywhere from 15 to 90, right? Like depending right. on how the band books and, and you know, what their normal patterns are. Sure. But if you're going to do that, it won't work if you're not filling enough of someone's schedule and enough, you don't have the leverage. enough is perhaps a different amount for any given musician, right? right. So you got to figure out what that is and say, okay, I know that I need to fill, you know, uh, three out of, out of every four of this guy's weekends. On, on, uh, otherwise somebody else is going to be his first call. That's how it's going to be. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, on determining the leverage there. So if you yeah. say we're, we're only going to play once a month, but it's going to be a thousand dollars a man, yeah. you, you know, you need to keep it. And then you have to deliver on that. And then that has month, to happen. Right? That's right. Yep. So all those things, but I, I, Again, it not not bad people, but the act of communicating something that might make affect somebody else is almost by definition, you know, a contentious moment yep. to what degree to contentious. So the more stuff that you can stay out front, but my pendulum has swung farther over to the business side than from the friend side. The friend side, I think, is something I think it's something. Well, if you're lucky enough to kind of fall in with a bunch of friends and kind of go through things and all that type of stuff. I guess you develop a different type of bonds, but I doubt, I mean, even despite everyone's best attentions, 
adult groups finding each other through Craigslist are really going to create, you know, I mean, you know, enough trust and enough, like, you know, this person to make the assumptions as to what they'll do. No, you gotta, fire, it, right? you gotta, you gotta, you're going to find out over, you know, a 24 month period is what's going to happen. Yeah. That's the only yeah, way sure. everybody, I mean, no. everybody talks a good talk up front the, the, the you That's know, the it. person running the band, the people already in the band, the new person in the band, everybody, and probably believes what they're saying in that moment, like at not even intentionally misleading, but the realities are often a little more nuanced. <laughs> I had a guy who joined the House Rockers for a while. He was very, very, very good, very well-known local player. Yep. And I think I probably told this story. I and yep. I sat him down before and explained this is a sideman gig. You know, you're not going to be get a whole lot of solo vocal, lead vocal. And he was like, No, no, I just want to be in a band. I just, yep. I love what you guys do. I love how much you work. I love the vibe. I want in. Within two months, you know, he was like, Why can't I do that? Why can't right? And yep. it was falling apart. <laughs> To his credit, even though he moved the goalpost on that, to his credit, said, I know you've got six months of solid gigs. I will stay until either you don't want me anymore and find somebody else or whatever. And I, I can accept that. Right. That was That's a great. I, I mean, I think that that was cool. That wasn't someone who who was like, yeah, I promised you this, but now I want this. And if I can't have my way, I'll take my I'm, marbles. I'm out. Home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of cool. But again, to the original email. I, I don't I think it's naive, even with the best intentions, to assume that people are going to, you know, prioritize any weekend warrior gig for sure. Yeah. Well, and unless, everybody, everybody's even if you all say we're going to make this band our priority, right? Like that means something. Di everyone is going to interpret totally. that differently. Like, well, obviously my job comes first or obviously my family comes first or obviously if somebody offers me a gig for a thousand dollars, that comes first. Like these are the thoughts in everybody's head when they're saying, yep, I agree. <laughs> right? Like the, there's always the asterisk and you don't, they may not even know we as humans might not even know what those asterisks are in that moment. They will present themselves and it, and when you just got to the house that. rockers. Yeah. When the house rockers was were really starting to take off, I remember one time I did a three day turnaround on a business trip to China to get back for the weekend. Yep, I had some guy tell me after I got back he was going to miss that gig because it was his mother in law's birthday. Oh no! So so again, yeah, you know, hey, yeah. What do you do with that information? Like you're like. Well, I'm, I mean, you made that decision to do the three day turnaround to China, which yep. like, that's insane, by the way. Yep. Uh, yep. That's a younger man's game is what that is. <laughs> and I was, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but man, like, yeah, I, you know, it's like, well, how do I, you, 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 yeah, you just, yep. You just, just cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, nothing you can say. So, nope. <laughs> again, you're, but that that's actually the best point. Commitment means a very different thing to many different people, yeah. right? Prioritizing means a very different thing. And the more you can be specific about expectations as a leader of a band or as in a democracy, let everybody should have this. Whether sure. you're setting the rules or you're agreeing to the rules communally, that's you're, you're that's, impacting them. That's the deal, one way or another. Yeah, but leaving anything up to expectations or hope or 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 up to purely friendship. And I'm, I'm of course I'm not I'm not denigrating the value of friendship or playing music with your friends. No, it's awesome. Or, it is awesome. But I'm just simply saying that, as you said, people's perspectives on everything in life can often be varied. And um, and uh, yeah, I just setting expectations up front, being clear about it. And and, and again, in my pers in my position, I've I've wavered over to the business end of the spectrum, Makes but sense. still, but still desire to have a good friendship with these yeah, guys. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it. That's yeah. the dream. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that email, Mark. That was awesome. Great stuff, man. We got anything else today, Paul? No. All good right. one. We'll get, I'm looking forward to getting Nick next week. I uh, was yeah, looking forward we'll, to today, but we'll figure it out. You know, the, the tech sure. gods, we can always, we can always whip that stuff into shape. Thanks for hanging Absolutely. out with us folks. Again, feedback at giggabpodcast.com. Send in your notes. We reply to your stuff. We include in the show what we can, but we really love hearing from you. So please do that. Check out our sponsors, factormeals.com slash giggab50, capoapp.com. What's the other thing we say? Always be performing. See.